heavily on the, the landings reports from dealers, which Terry talked about, which were required weekly for the first time for a lot of dealers this year. Federal dealers have, off, have been having to report weekly for a while now, but this was something new to the state only dealers. So um, when a week was over, the dealers were supposed to have their reports in by the following Tuesday. So every Wednesday morning, we download all the data. Um, our staff were entering any data that came in on paper the day that it arrived. Um, so every Wednesday morning, in theory, we should have all the landings for the previous week. So I'll show you how that went. Um, at the end of the first week, we had 183 tons in hand. So we looked at that and said, okay, you know, less than 200 tons a week. Looks like we're going to make it, you know, maybe 10 weeks at that rate. Um, but after the second week, the first week's number went up to 242 tons. And we had another 180 tons for the second week. So we said, okay, we knew the first week uh, there was a certain learning curve for the dealers. Um, Heidi Bray and our, our landings people were on the phone all the time after the dealers that had not submitted their reports to submit them. Um, so we figured the first week was just kind of a learning curve problem, and we hoped that the late reporting would get better, um, which it sort of did. But um, by week, the end of week three, we were now up to 270 tons for the first week, um, up to 217 for the second week, and then we had another 200 for the third week. So up to 700 tons total for the season after three weeks. So we're thinking, Okay, we're still we're still all right. You know, that's still just a little over 200 tons a week. Um, maybe we can make this thing last. After week four, a little bit more for week one. Maybe we're maybe we finally got all of week one by now. Um, and by the way, I want to say about week one, um, catch rates were not all that good, um, especially in the Portland Cundies Harbor area. They were really pretty low. Uh, South Bristol. Uh, New Harbor, we're doing really well. Uh, Port Clyde was sort of in between. Um, so I think the fishermen managed to convince Terry and, and the commissioner to, uh, you know, that their catch rates were not going to be all that high. And so they changed the 1 o'clock uh, end of day to 3 o'clock for trawlers. So that happened um, after the first two days of fishing. Um, anyway, so after at the end of the fourth week, which is ended on January 27th, we were up to 1,000 tons. And we were thinking, okay, that's, that's not great because if we get another 1,000 tons in February and we haven't even added uh, the trappers yet, um, we're, we're pushing that 2,200 now at this rate. Um, also realize that the dealer reports do not include anything that's peddled that fishermen sell either to a retailer or sell themselves or keep for personal use. Um, and so the technical committee had to kind of guesstimate what that might be, which tends to run about 10% more. So now we're starting to think um, that we may not make it till the end of February. <coughs> um, and so at the end of week five, which week five was the first week of February, so we started to get some traffic <coughs> in now. Trappers did not do well that first week at all, really, anywhere. Hardly anybody got their 1,000 ton limit. Um, and now we're up to uh, 1,300 tons. And um, at this point, the TC projected um, that even if trappers didn't do particularly well, they were adding enough, uh, combined with the estimating uh, late reporting, which you see is still, you know, we're still coming in with re more reports from earlier weeks that legally should have already been totally reported. Um, so at this point, we projected that we were going to go over the 2,200 tons by the following week. And I'm sure anybody who was following this on our website was kind of amazed by that because, you know, 1,300 tons doesn't sound that close to 2,200. But because of having to assume that there's going to be more late reports coming in, the peddler reports coming in, the trappers now online, um, that was the projection that we made. So, um, the, uh, as Terry said, the um, section uh, scheduled a conference call that happened that following week. Um, by the day of that call, we had one more week's worth of landings in, and now we're up to just about 2,000 tons. So now we knew, you know, that we're going to go over because, um, again, that we have another fishing week underway. Uh, we don't have the peddler stuff. We know there's going to be more late stuff. So um, by 
by the time of that conference call, we knew we were there and probably a bit over. Um, and then by the end of that week, we were over. Uh, we now have over 2,300 tons in hand. Um, so we know that we went a little bit, at least a little bit over the, the, um, the quota. And this past week, we got a little bit more coming in late. And it will, I'm sure, continue to trickle in late. Um, so we're now up to 2,373 in hand. Um, based on the idea that there's still going to be maybe another 100 tons coming in late and a couple more 100 tons uh, from the peddler trade, which we won't see until we look at the harvester reports, because that all of that, everything should be on the harvester's reports, but they're only required monthly, so we don't have them yet. Um, we're guesstimating that we're going to be somewhere between 2,600 and 2,700 tons of um, Late reporting wasn't just a problem for Maine. In fact, Maine did pretty, pretty well compared to Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Uh, but 19% of Maine's landings were reported after the reporting deadline. 74% uh, and 43% for Massachusetts and New Hampshire, respectively. Um, only 4% of Maine's landings were more than a week late. Um, but you can see it still had quite a bit of impact on our ability to try to project what was happening. Um, so by state, uh, Maine took 90% of that 2,300 tons. Massachusetts 4%, New Hampshire 6%. Um, and Maine trappers only took about 7% of the total. And that, as you all know, was low for them. They typically get about 15% of, of the Gulf of Maine landings each year. In years when they've been able to have a full season. So I think they really took a hit. Um, and the number of boats, um, about 300 boats in the fishery this winter, which is a lot. I mean, it's, it wasn't less than last year. We thought it might be less because just because the season was so constrained. But you know, everybody participated. Oops. And of uh, of Maine's 270 boats, about 170 of them are trawling, and the other 50 are trapping. Um, Catch rates were really high. Um, things got better for the trawlers after that first week. Um, and they stay, they average about 400 pounds an hour, which is not the highest it's ever been, but it's high. Uh, trappers didn't do very well for trapping. Um, it looked like the seventh week things were starting to cook for them. Um, that's, that may be a little skewed high because that week we only sampled the New Harbor and that, that's one of the ports that had been doing pretty well right along. Um, Booth Bay area, Georgetown, didn't do so well. Um, but, um, and so they were averaging about eight pounds per trap haul and usually they average more like 14-ish. So um, not great for them, um, but there's some signs that it might have been getting better. Um, and then counts per pound this year were really bad, really high. Um, around 50 shrimp per pound for the trawlers and about 47 for the trappers. So um, mostly a four-year-old product and even those four-year-olds were small for their age. Typically a, like a five-year-old shrimp is about 35, 37 per pound, somewhere in there. Four-year-olds typically are in the low to mid 40s. So this was this was really a high count per pound, even for four-year-olds. Um, interestingly, further east you go along the main coast, the better the counts per pound were. Um, they, they were getting a few five-year-olds, not a lot, but more fives than anybody else was, I think. So they're, um, we haven't worked up a lot of their samples, but the ones that we have worked up, they're, they're getting a lower count per pound. And size distribution of the shrimp that were caught this year, um, mostly centering around 24 millimeters, which is a, a small four-year-old. Um, your five-year-olds would be in the 26 to 30 millimeter size range. You can see there's not much for five-year-olds this year. And four-year-olds typically are between um, 24 to 26, so even, even those are small. Um, but not a lot of males this year, so that's a good thing. We, Then um, <clears throat> trawlers are on the left, trappers are on the right. 
Um, what I just showed you was weeks one and two and weeks two and uh, three and four. This is the top graphs here are weeks five and six. Um, and you can see that egg hatch is underway. Um, and then the bottom is uh, week seven, which uh, trawlers on the left and trappers on the right. And you can see egg hatch is, is well advanced. About 70% of the shrimp are, are hatched off at this point. Um, so, and that's ahead of schedule. So I'm thinking that the shrimp probably would not have hung around a whole lot longer. You know, probably another week or two. <coughs> Okay, and then Eastern Maine, uh, Stonington, and then we got Winter Harbor, we got some, some samples. And you can see they have more in this, more than anybody else in, in that area. Those, that's the five-year-olds there, and then these are the, the four-year-olds. So they 